Here's a quick and dirty video on how to install and configure FVWM3 in FreeBSD. You can get in touch with me via the YouTube comment section, Twitter or X, and email if you've got any questions or suggestions. Right, installing FVWM3 is easy in FreeBSD. Uh, what we're going to do first is just go into root. You can use sudo or do as if you wish. And I'm going to do a pkg update to pull in the latest tree. That's already been done, so that's fine. And we're going to search for FVWM. So it's pulled in all the packages that match that. You've got FVWM2, but it's the third one we want, the one at the bottom, FVWM3. So we need to issue pkg install fvwm3. The other two files, the fvwm2 and fvwm themes, uh, they will work with fvwm3 to a certain extent. For at the moment, and the developers stated that they want to move away from the old legacy configs, but we're going to use them in this video. Right, so it doesn't take long to install. Just exit root. Clear the screen. Now we need to edit the x init rc or the dot x init rc, and this will let us choose the desktop to go into when we start x. So the format of this command is really easy. It's xx as execute, and then fvwm3, and that's it. We'll save the file. So the next time when we boot in and we start x. We shall get this. And this is the stock default look of FVWM3. It's very nice. It's very ornate. I like the wallpaper. There's not much happening. You do get a menu pops up when you left click. Um, you get your programs that are installed. XDG, which is not working. We'll configure that later. I know what the problem is. Uh, Xterm. And you get some various knickknacks out of change wallpapers, etc. It's um, very comprehensive for an old uh, window manager. It's not bad at all, actually. And right click will give us some more options. And the default configuration gives us four desktops made up of uh, four paging areas, if, if that makes sense. And then you get a date and time at the bottom. So it's uh, very neat and tidy. There's not much clutter uh, going on here, which is good. Right, there are, you can, you can configure it from scratch if you wish, and there's a lot of configuration to be doing if you want to change things. Or you can use uh, the easy route and let's go for what's already out there. So if we change into the .fvwm folder, and list uh, contents, you realize there's nothing in there. So you'll get the default one every time you start up. Now, if you want a configuration file that's pre-made, uh, there's several ways to go around it. Like I say, you can start from scratch if you wish, or you can go to the FVWM3 official GitHub page, and there's the address at the top. I'll put a link in the description box down below. And we go down to, if I can find it, um, this is not a bad page actually, it gives you a lot of information. But what we're after is, he says, looking furiously, there is default config. And if we click on that, it will take us in there. You can see various pre-made config scripts. And what we want is the, it just says config. It's not dot config or config dot text or anything like that. It just says config. And it's just, obviously a mos, it's just a text file. But we need to actually save that into the dot fvwm3 uh, directory, which is empty. And that will allow us to, well, basically just have a template in which we can alter things if you wish. So we'll just save that. Save the raw uh, file. Saved. Yep. And like I say, that gives us something to work on rather than uh, having to type it for nothing. You don't, no one's got time for that. And now if we list, you see there's a config file. So it always has to be called config. And if we edit that config, there you go. And 
what I like about this, it actually lists out the various um, parts. Look, you've got function styles, color sets, menus, bindings, decor, and modules into each section, which I think is uh, it's pretty neat. So we're just going to scroll down and try and alter something that we can see a change in straight away, shall we? Uh, diddly diddly. Could do the uh, could do the wallpaper bit. That's a bit too much. Kerfuffle, I ain't got no on hand at the moment. Oh, that, then we'll do that. Desktops and pages. Yeah. It says, FVWM has both virtual desktops and pages. Each desktop is built from a grid of pages, usually four. The following sets uh, the name of four desktops and then divide each desktop into a two by two grid of pages. Uh, it's like the first thing we can do is just change the number of uh, pages. So we'll go down to that. Uh, the one at the bottom it says desktop size two by two. So we just change that if you want uh, to three by three. And then add another desktop. Uh, we'll add another one. Just to even things out. Desk four. And I think we'll try that. Save it. And, uh, ooh, yeah, so we'll just restart. There's an option at the bottom that says restart. And bingo, there we go. Now we've got a three by three and four desktops. Now, I mean, that's, you know, this is a quick and easy change, but it shows you that it updates it in real time, you know, obviously after a restart, but it's easy to do. And everything is signposted and uh, labeled. But there's a lot to configure, so, you know, it's not something that you're going to do in two seconds. But anyway, let's go on, uh, well, let's grab some that's already made. Now, these ones are pretty neat. These are for FVWM2, but like I said, they will work. So if we go into our FVWM directory, there's the config file. We're going to change the name of config to, I don't know, uh, config2. Change the name of config2, config2. Oh, that's confusing. So then we're going to go into... Uh, let's, let's, um, let's have a look at it first before we... Yeah, I'll look at this one, SG. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that one. So SG styling, I think. Silicon graphics, no doubt. And there's the config file. We can save that as it is. Uh, we'll just knock off the prefix and take away the ending call it config and save it to the file you know to the directory restart and yep yeah, let's change the color and the menu structure <laughs> oh goodness me yeah just make sure it's got everything you need in it before you actually commit yeah so that's pretty cool i like that that's a good styling and, you know, you can, again, you can change it. Uh, if you like this one, you can customize it to whichever application you've got installed. So we're going to change that to, uh, we're going to rename that to config3. And we're going to try another one. If I can find in this new menu system, uh, restart here. Once you've renamed the config file again, say that to config3, and then restart, it'll go back to the default if there isn't a config file in there. Uh, oh, I like this one. This one's good. Uh, extended Slack, it's called. Try this one. Again, same procedure. We download it into the FEWM directory. Call it config. Restart. If uh, I can find it. And there we go. And that's it, really. That's a quick and dirty way of getting it configured. Right, to fix that XDG error in the menu uh, that we saw at the beginning, I just really had to install three packages, and that was basically Pi XDG, Pi 3.9 XDG, that is. And it pulled in uh, what it needed, and that was enough to fix it. You not necessarily have the same problem, but if you do, then uh, that's how you quickly change that. And by doing that, we have an our working XDG menu look, which pulls in, as it happens on the here, some... Uh, XFCE applications, etc. And LibreOffice and everything else which I'd installed under XFCE. I can't say that I'll be using uh, FVWM3. I mean, it's, it's nice and fast and it's motif looking, which um, I do happen to like. 
But for me, I think I'll stick to uh, NWM. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.